Hi, I'm Gwen Wright, Planning Director in Montgomery County, Maryland, and welcome to Ask Me Anything. This is an opportunity to talk about Thrive Montgomery 2050, which is our update to Montgomery County's general plan, and to uh, hear from you about some of the ideas that uh, are coming up as part of that effort. So I'd like to share a PowerPoint presentation with you, and then we will move into the question and answer phase of the event. So as I mentioned, this is Ask Me Anything, and uh, we are going to go through a few slides, but then get into a uh, opportunity for you to uh, ask questions, raise, raise issues, or talk about anything related to the general plan you'd like to talk about. Again, I'm uh, Gwen Wright, Montgomery County Planning Director, and I'm uh, really happy to be with you today. Uh, one of the things that the general plan is about is, a, is about imagining the future and thinking about what, uh, what the future holds for Montgomery County. We've been uh, talking to a lot of people in the community and our planners have been putting their uh, thoughts together. And what we want to do is ask you to let your imagination uh, go wild and think about what Montgomery County in 2050 will be. Uh, some of the things we've thought about are um, picturing vibrant gathering places and open spaces in every neighborhood, uh, a theme that we're calling complete communities. Uh, picturing that everything you might need is within a 15 minute walk from home without the need to jump in the car and travel long distances. Certainly as we're all um, working through this COVID-19 um, crisis. Uh, I, I'm sure we've all thought about how nice it would be to be able to have quick and easy access to our drug stores, to our grocery stores, uh, and not have to uh, feel uh, quite so isolated in our, our neighborhoods. Um, we have been picturing our county roads as safe, walkable, and beautiful boulevards. We've talked about that concept a lot over the last few years, but we really haven't accomplished it. And uh, it, is, it is a really important direction to move. Um, picturing housing as a right uh, with more affordable and attainable housing options. And, and we really like that term attainable because it's not about government subsidized affordable housing, it's about housing that is attainable to our children and grandchildren to enter the real estate market with starter homes that's attainable for older people who want to continue to live in their neighborhood but maybe want to move out of their single family homes. So those are some of the, the ideas that have been running through our imagination and we're going to uh, ask you to, to share some of yours. So what is Thrive Montgomery 2050? It's an, it is an update to our general plan, which was last comprehensively updated in 1969, more than 50 years ago. It's a long range vision for the future of the county that deals with future initiatives, countywide policies, uh, infrastructure, community amenities, private development, but it does not go in and change the zoning on any piece of property. What it is, as I've, I've described it to my own staff, is it sets our work program for the next 10 to 20 years in terms of thinking about new programs, new master plans, new projects that we should be undertaking to realize what is hopefully a uh, exciting and and um, agreed upon vision for how the county is going to grow. When we did our 1969 general plan, um, there were a lot of ideas that were discussed, but they weren't implemented in 1969. Again, a general plan does not immediately change zoning or change master plans. So when the 1969 plan talked about increasing affordable housing, that resulted uh, 
in uh, the early 70s in our moderately priced dwelling unit law. When that plan talked about protecting farmland, that resulted in 1980 with our preservation of agriculture and rural open space plan, the Ag Reserve, and transfer of development rights. When it talked about guiding the timely installation of needed infrastructure, that resulted in the early 70s in our adequate public facilities ordinance. So if our Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan is successful, people will look back in the year 2050 and say, wow, these new programs and ideas that have been implemented all started in 2020 when that general plan was updated and when they laid out ideas for new policies and actions that would guide the future of the county. Why are we doing an update to the general plan now? As mentioned, it's over 50 years old, but more than that, uh, the county has changed from a suburban bedroom community to a community of diverse employment centers of areas that are very urban, uh, including still our suburban and rural communities, but we have some other communities that are very urban uh, with all the, the challenges and advantages that go with that. We have a, a projected growth of 200,000 new residents in the next 30 years, and we need to think about where those new residents are going to live. We have changing technologies and cultural shifts, and we'll talk more about that, but the fact that I'm um, sharing this presentation with you over the internet, I'm sitting in my dining room at a laptop, and speaking to all of you talks directly to the new technologies, the new ways of communicating, the new ways of relating that we have. As we move into the 21st century, as again, as a county, we're going to need to embrace urbanism for certain portions of the county. We need to think about how we can grow and thrive in a more urban way in many, many parts of the county. Just to reinforce some of the changes that I've just mentioned, one of the, the biggest cultural shifts is the change in county demographics. These images show you are uh, based on census tract, our predominant racial or ethnic group in 1990. On the left, in uh, 19, and in 2016 on the right, uh, the dark blue is uh, predominantly white. You can see how much of that was in the county in 1990 and how that has changed dramatically in 2016. We are now a county where the majority of our residents are people of color and that is going to continue um, over the next 30 years. We have an increasingly older population. Again, as you can see by 2040, it looks like about 46% of our residents will be over the age of 45. That um, is a big change and it is something we must account for as a county. More people are working from home. Well, you're not kidding. <laughs> right now, it's a large number of people working from home. Uh, in 2016, it was 6.2%, which was a large increase from 1990. But I would guess by 2050, that number is going to be much, much higher, possibly even getting close to 50%. Uh, we have learned through this COVID-19 crisis that it is possible to, to work from home, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. We have done a great deal of outreach, and I'm, I'm very, very proud that we have reached out to people all over the county and in different uh, ways so that we've heard the voices of residents who don't normally participate in the planning process. And what have we heard? Well, one of the big things we've heard is the rent is too darn high. We've also heard about traffic, but we've also heard other things such as we'd like to have mixed 
income communities and mixed income schools. We don't want to see more houses in the Ag Reserve. We want to protect that important resource. We must relieve the congestion along I-270. Uh, we need to attract independent businesses. Uh, I think that the, the interest in entrepreneurship and in small business came across at so many of our uh, outreach activities. When you think about it, Marriott Corporation was an entrepreneurial small business started in Montgomery County probably about 60, 70 years ago. What is the next Marriott Corporation going to be for Montgomery County? What's the next entrepreneurial small business going to be that turns out to be a major, major corporation? Our current land use uh, offers up some challenges. About 35% of the county is uh, in single family zoning and uh, about uh, 43, 44% of the county is in agriculture and parks. What that means is that we have very little unconstrained land left. According to uh, this chart that we've updated recently, only about 15% of the land in the county is unconstrained. And what that means is one major um, reality that the Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan is going to have to uh, deal with and that we're all going to have to shift in our thinking is that our future growth as a county is infill, not green fields, but infill, adaptive reuse of existing buildings, building on pieces of land that maybe we did not think ever would be built upon. One of our favorite sayings at the planning department is uh, we are turning parking lots into places. We need to consider every kind of um, potential site as an infill site in order to accommodate the kinds of growth that we project in the future. Another reality uh, is that our housing growth is not meeting the needs of our growing population. The number of units produced per year has dropped dramatically in the last 30 years. And if we are going to, again, have 200,000 new residents in the next 30 years, we are going to have to have more housing in more places of more types, using different building materials, using different kinds of buildings, and we cannot uh, continue on the path that we're on, or we will, um, not have enough housing and housing prices will continue to rise and become unattainable and unaffordable. When we started the general plan, we said, what are our three major outcomes that we want to achieve? What, what's really our framework? And we decided really that economic health, community equity and environmental resilience were the three major outcomes uh, for Thrive Montgomery. And Thrive, I also want to mention, is an important word because we all agree Montgomery County is a great place right now to live and work and play, but we cannot rest on our past successes. If we are going to address some of the challenges of the future that I just described, whether it be the need for more housing, or um, the fact that we have uh, communities that uh, have very, very significant traffic problems, or the fact that we have communities with significant uh, equity issues. If we're going to address those kinds of problems and not just live with the status quo, we are going to have to make changes. We are going to have to make shifts in the way we uh, see the county and how we see it grow. And that is going to be necessary for us to move beyond the status quo and to move into thriving in the 21st century. 
all of this has resulted in a, uh, a vision for Montgomery County that, that is the result of a lot of the feedback we've gotten at our outreach, uh, feedback we've gotten from the planning board and from the county council about some of our initial ideas. So we believe that the vision for the county in 2050 is no longer just one central corridor, I-270, uh, surrounded by large uh, wedges in the rest of the county, but really a web of complete communities connected by vibrant corridors. And those complete communities are individual and unique centers of neighborhood activity and urban nodes that optimize land use with a variety of housing types, and price points and are close to transit, workplaces, needed goods and services, public amenities and active park spaces. We have many, many great communities in the county and we want to assure that they are complete, that they have all of the elements that are needed to uh, create a complete community. We want to see those communities connected by vibrant corridors, corridors that are not just how you get from here to there, but are comfortable, safe, multimodal transportation corridors with housing and services along those corridors. We also want to optimize our corridors of green parks, stream valleys, and trails to provide additional ways to connect communities throughout the county. We have looked at all of our um, issues and ideas and, and categorized them into uh, eight significant goals. All of those goals are related to our three uh, outcomes, our framework of economic health, environmental resilience, and community equity. But we feel like the policies and actions that need to be considered fall into these eight categories. Safe and efficient travel, complete communities, diverse and adaptable growth, connectedness, affordability and attainability, diverse economies, a healthy and sustainable environment, and culture and design. To uh, get to the vision that uh, I've just been describing, to address the many uh, issues and challenges we have, we have to we have to deal with some big shifts as a county, and uh, we want to identify some of those big shifts that are going to inform our policies and actions. First of all, um, again, we have to understand that we are not a bedroom suburban community anymore, that urbanism is a good thing and many parts of our county are urban. Uh, corridors connecting these nodes are the future. And in each of these nodes, we want to have 15 minute living where you're able to get to everything you need, including work, schools, um, recreational facilities, health care in 15 minutes. Uh, as we all, again, experience the COVID-19 crisis, uh, what we want to make sure is that people aren't isolated in their homes and neighborhoods, but have the ability to get to the drugstore, to purchase drugs, to get to a grocery store, to uh, get to places where they can take a walk and experience the outdoors, all in 15 minutes of walking or biking. Active lifestyles, they equal not only health, but also the, the social connectedness that is so important. Again, what we've experienced as an, a real need over the last 
couple of months of quarantine is that we need connections of people and places and that uh, active lifestyles, the 15 minute living, all of these are elements and ways to build on that social connectedness. We also need to begin to think of housing as a right and a value. Uh, that we need housing to not just be government subsidized affordable, but we need it to be attainable to the younger generation coming up, but also to the older generation who is thinking about leaving their single family home, but want to stay in their existing neighborhood. Major roads need, need to be transformed into boulevards. And we're going to talk about that more, but a big part of that is that we have to stop planning for cars. And we need to depave the county. That's, again, the parking lots to places idea, but it, it even goes beyond that. We need to have um, the least possible uh, paving in both our um, public rights of ways, but also in our uh, new development and growth. We need varieties of commercial uses. We completely support and need our large employers and our government um, campuses like NIH and FDA, but we need smaller businesses. We need entrepreneurs. We need people willing to have businesses in our complete communities and along our corridors. Uh, it is a mix of uses that is necessary to really create this sense of a complete community. We need regional solutions to problems. We often think pretty uh, insularly in Montgomery County and we need to stop that. We need to start thinking regionally uh, about how we can connect from a transportation standpoint, how we can handle many of our housing problems, how we can uh, deal with uh, te technological I issues and solutions uh, on a regional basis. Diversity is our strength, not only our diversity of uh, racial, ethnic, and, and heritage, but our diversity of place, the fact that we are urban, suburban, and rural. That is our strength as a county. We are a, a really um, complex and strong web of places and people. And finally, we have to embrace that importance of place. We need to understand that people do want to come together. It is part of our social fabric. We need to have places to do that in every community. We need to encourage placemaking uh, with um, appropriate public art, appropriate design of public spaces, and with great architecture. We deserve to have the highest quality places in this region. And I think we need to demand great design and, and move forward with great places. Just to highlight a few of those topics, when we talk about corridors, you see Rockville Pike on the left and 14th Street in DC on the right. Lots to learn from these images. What's important is, hap is what happens not only outside the right of way, creating great buildings and um, great architecture, but also what happens within the right of way. Uh, getting rid of overhead utilities, having wide sidewalks, having uh, streets that have bike paths, strong crosswalks, and frequent crosswalks, uh, places for on-street parking. All of these things go to take a large swath of asphalt and make it more human, making it safer for pedestrians and creating a corridor that people want to walk up and down and that they want to populate. 
Again, the parking lots to places idea on the upper portion of this slide on the left, you see the old mid Pike Plaza with its giant parking lot. On the right, you see Pike and Rose where that parking lot has been developed into smaller, more manageable blocks with green roofs, parks, treat areas, um, solar panels, uh, ways to make it a more uh, humane place that people want to populate, where they want to stop, where they want to socialize and gather. On the regional solution side, I'll just share this one image which relates to transportation, although I've mentioned it could, we can think about many, many issues on a regional basis. In this, it's looking how we can extend transit to really, really make those connections with our neighbors in Prince George's County, the District of Columbia, Northern Virginia, and of course, our neighbors to the north in Frederick and Howard counties. Transit is the solution. It is really the, the most important solution. And we uh, think there are lots of opportunities to connect uh, on a regional basis. Finally, embracing the importance of place. Again, this is a great image because it shows people coming together to enjoy Frankly, what's a parking lot, but it's been turned into a farmer's market and it's become a place. We can do this on all scales and at all levels where we are going to create places that are gathering spots, that are opportunities for our communities to have, to have focus, to have identity. Um, we're all craving those kinds of locations, especially now during the time of, of, of quarantine. But when we embrace that importance of place, we need to make sure to demand that those places are the best that they can be, that we have a high quality of design, of landscape design, of park design, of public art, and of placemaking of all types. Just to uh, end up with our project timeline, we have been working hard for nearly a year now, uh, looking at the trends, looking at the issues, drafting visions and goals, doing a lot of outreach, reporting back into our planning board and our county council. Where we are now, is uh, where the rubber meets the road. We're working on drafting some detailed policies and actions that will be presented to the planning board on June 11th. And we want to hear from you. That is why we are doing this event and others. We would like to hear if we're headed in the right direction. Our working draft will be out in September 2020 with a planning board public hearing in the fall and transmittal to the council in March of 2021. And the council will be reviewing and hopefully improving this Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan in April or May of uh, 2021. So that concludes the presentation. What we're really interested in now is what questions or comments do you have about Thrive Montgomery 2050? Share your comments in the chat. And I am thrilled to talk about this very, very special and important project.